Welcome everyone, and thank you for your interest in participating in our COVID-19 virtual datathon. Uh, this session is uh, going to go over the data resources that are available for us uh, during the datathon. Part one of this presentation will be presented by Peter Rice, uh, who will talk about the COVID data sets that he's been loading into Transmart. And then I will follow up with a description of uh, a knowledge base and knowledge graph uh, from Ingentium, uh, our COVID newscast and knowledge graph uh, at the end. So um, let me pass it over. Uh, uh, remember that we're going to be conducting a data thon um, for the next week in November 18th to 20th, three days. Um, data thon uh, is a workshop where researchers come together with data scientists uh, and uh, data sets. Uh, and uh, similar to a hackathon, focus on a few areas that are uh, of interest and try to make some progress during that time using the tools available and the data. Uh, and uh, at the end of the, the third day, uh, have uh, the, all the participants will present uh, the results of their work. Uh, these training webinars, uh, one took place already on Wednesday uh, and the recording is available. And uh, today uh, we're doing the, the data sets. Um, and these, uh, this is also being recorded and it will be available uh, later today, uh, again, uh, on, uh, on our website. Um, Peter, let me turn it over to you. Okay, you should see my slide view. In the first talk, I did introduce the, uh, the data thon and uh, a view of some of the, the data sets that we have. So I'll refer you to, to that video rather than uh, repeat the slides. Do please uh, take a look through the, the first 10 minutes with an overview of the, the data sets that we have. I'll take you through now how to look at the internals of the data, how to show, how to see um, how data is um, held in Transmart, how to explore it, how to analyze within Transmart, and then how to, if necessary, go out of, outside of Transmart and get a more detailed look at the data. So we'll go through how things look in Transmart, the metadata for the studies that we have available, uh, how to get to citations, published works on the data, and how to find the original data set. A note on how the data set's been curated to get them into Transmart, and then a note on how to export data from Transmart so that you can use um, subsets of the data for your own analysis. And then we'll point you to some documentation resources and some help and support resources, and we'll be sending you emails uh, between now and the data on where to find further resources as they become available. So in Transmart, we view each of these uh, data sets as a discrete study. Uh, they come um, so far from the gene expression omnibus, which is an NIH uh, resource. And uh, subjects can be animals or cell lines, or they can be human subjects. So it's clinical trials plus experimental gene expression data. You get uh, the basic data about the cell line, the human, and then you get high dimensional data, so sets of values for individuals within the study. Uh, typically, gene expression data or most of the COVID data is uh, RNA seq data. So RNA sequence data matched the genome with counts for each of the genes. There are citations um, in the literature, and there are references back to the original data in GEO where there may be more information available, and uh, a bunch of metadata about the studies as well. I'll give you pointers for those. So within Transmart, um, the data is arranged under data types. So you can have numeric data, like in this case, survival time or age for human patients, and text data, uh, which could be um, sex, male or female, is a common one, in this case, cell types. And then the high dimensional data, one or more sets of high dimensional data for the study with different icons on them. So you can see what sort of data you're looking at in Transmart. So here's a, a study in Transmart. It's not a very detailed study, but I've picked it because everything fits on the screen nicely. There is more data for quite a few of the other studies in here. 
So in this study, we don't have any useful clinical data. We've got uh, bronchial, uh, bronchoalveolar lavage, so um, samples washed out of the lung. For uh, three COVID patients, all the samples have the same data, so there's no way to make useful subjects. Normally, you would make male, female, COVID patient and control patients or severe COVID and less severe, etc. from your data. You track it across into the, the subsets here to make queries. Um, more was on that in the first video. So I'll show you how we get that uh, level of uh, clinical data out of the uh, information from GEO. Also have the high dimensional data set and when you drag that, there's a set of data that goes with the high dimensional data set. So we have uh, the name of the platform, in this case, it's human gene names. Uh, you have some sample treatment, in this case, typically virus infection or not, if it's a cell line. Some time points, so these can be done at different time points in the infection of a cell line. And information about the tissue. And we would either divide up the, the data into those subsets so that you could drag in one at a time. Or for some of these studies, we're loading all the high dimensional data together. And then you can just select the time points if they're available within the clinical data. That's an interesting way to look at things in Transmart. And we think that would make life easier for looking at those studies. And if anybody would like the study loaded differently, we can just reload these. Uh, we just change the study name slightly and reload the study with a different view of the data, different grouping by time points, etc. So I'm expecting to have to do some of those for people on the data farm. Okay, so that's how the data looks, and we'll take a look later at how to curate it to that level. We also have top level information in uh, in Transmart. So you have information about uh, the disease, and at the, at the very top level of the Browse tab, it's split into disease. So COVID 19, MERS, and SARS, the two previous coronavirus outbreaks. And then studies are stored under those. We have uh, about 30 studies for MERS, we have around 40 studies for SARS, and we have more than 80 now for, uh, I believe, for COVID-19. We're getting about five new studies a week, there may be some more before the data on if there's time to curate them. We also have a few other coronavirus studies, so there are some more than 10 um, other studies on coronaviruses of various sorts that may be relevant for comparison. And we have five studies that may be useful for comparison, so we've just loaded those as public studies. Uh, for example, quite a few of these studies, because their respiratory disease are done in ferrets, and there's one study on healthy ferrets for comparison, so we just included that. And then below that level, you have a, an entry for each of the studies or each of the geo data sets with a description, a citation if there is one in the literature, contact details for the original um, authors, and the links to the original data set so you can download and get more information about the, uh, the RNA seq data or whatever other data type it is. So here's an example. Um, this is the, the study we were looking at before in Transmart. And we have in here um, a link to a PubMed to get the, uh, the data. We have a link, a DOI that links to the original journal article. And we also have a study link into GEO. We have a, a description, which can be quite brief for many of these studies. Um, others, it's more, more detailed. And we have an overall design here, which again gives more information about the, the study. That's the, the level of information that was in GEO when we extracted it. So you can navigate in the, the browse tab. You just open the program and then go down to the study of interest click on the study and you'll see this, uh, this display appear. So this is just a, a close up view of the same links. So this is the, the link to GEO. If you click here, it opens a window and takes you to the original data in GEO and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, PubMed takes you to an abstract and then to the full text of the article in the free PubMed um, resource. And the DOI takes you to the original journal article if you're permitted to see it by the journal. That varies by journal. 
Okay, so PubMed takes you here. So you can uh, read the article or read the abstract and click on the, the full text. There's a full text link here into PubMed Central. And that's the easiest way to get hold of the, uh, the article to read through. Uh, sometimes there's supplementary data available as well. And so um, there's a DOI in here, or there's the one in uh, Transmart that you can click on. And that takes you to the original published paper where there may be some supplementary data files that you can use to, to find out more. However, a word of warning, the COVID-19 studies are all very new and people are just putting their data into GEO as quickly as they can. And so many of these are not published. So the only clue to what people have done to generate the data and uh, what they found, consider the uses of it is in the metadata in GEO. So there may be some interesting exploration to try to figure out what's going on with some of these data sets. So if you click on the link to GEO, this is the information that GEO has, which we've passed in, mostly into the Browse tab. So you'll see it there. Uh, so this study yeah, released in July this year. Almost all these studies are released sometime in 2020. Cool. And so there's the PubMed Central citation here. And from that, we get the DOI. And then lower down, there's a link to, to further information. So for gene expression studies, you have a link to a platform, which is um, the names of all of the probes for gene expression on a microarray experiment. Uh, for RNA-seq data, this link is pretty hopeless. This link tells you it was a, gene, it was a DNA sequencing platform, but it doesn't tell you what any of the data actually means. So there's just a separate platform for each, each uh, gene sequencing machine and protocol. What you have to do is to actually go to the sample data for RNA-seq and have a look and see whether they're using gene names, ensemble identifiers, or some other form of identification for the data values. And then there are three samples in this case. As I say, I've chosen a small study just to show what's going on. So each of these is a COVID-19 patient, and we can click on these links to see more information about the, the patient samples. Further down, there are three links for the download family. And the usual one to go for is the series matrix file. That's a tab delimited text file, which has all the information about the uh, samples and the subjects. Below that, there's a supplementary file, if you're lucky. A uh, supplementary file, in this case, is a tar file that has all of the other information for the samples. And it gives you a clue here that these are going to be H5AD files. For many of these, you just get a, a tar file and you know information about what's going to be in it. Okay, if you click on the samples, you get information about the individual samples, and this will tell you the patient's sex and age if it's available. For some of these, obviously, those that information is being kept back to avoid putting any personal information into the, the data sets. And in many of these, the RNA sequencing data itself has been withheld because it could identify patients from the sequence data. But we do generally have the expression data from it. So in this case, we've got a, a source name, an organism, characteristics, it's COVID-19 patient, and the cell type is bronchial alveolar lavage fluid. And that's all the information you can usefully put into the uh, the clinical data in Transmart, because that's all that there is here. There's some information here, though, on the extraction protocol and the data processing. Uh, so you can look at that for more information about what may have been done to the data before it was released. And then at the bottom of the sample data, there's a link to data for the sample. In this case, everything was in that uh, original tar file for the entire data set. So we don't need to go here. But sometimes if you're unlucky, you have to go and download um, sample data for each sample individually. Um, either this sort of data or we've had studies for other projects where you have to go to the raw data and figure out the RNA-seq information yourself. 
So I'll take you through how that data was curated to get it into Transmart, and then you can see what's available in GEO if you go back to it to get any further information. So you download this series matrix file. That's the, the file that has all the information about the subjects and samples. You pass out the clinical data and put that into clinical data inputs for Transmart. If you have gene expression data, that's quite easy to pass out and just make a file. We look at an example for RNA-seq data where you have a bit more work to do to extract the sample identifiers, and three in this case, the gene identifiers, which in this case will be human gene names, and the actual RNA counts that are associated with them. And then you calculate from that. Uh, for RNA-seq data, we use TPM values, but there are various other ways to calculate recalculate the data. If uh, you might find that more useful, we can easily redo those for the studies that you're interested in. So this is a view of the, the Geo series matrix one. Uh, at the top is a, a set of uh, information about the entire um, data set. So the, the date of release, the title of the series, brief descriptions, are all in here, and that's what we extract to make the, the browse pad data. Below that, we get the information about the subjects and the samples. So here we have the second line down gives you the three sample identifiers. GSM is the standard geo sample identifiers. Um, they have very little data on them, so the source name is uh, doesn't even have the patient number in that. Subject status is COVID patient, COVID patient, COVID patient, and cells from COVID patient. And so we've uh, we've created a patient number to go with these, so that you can see the, the patient separately. If we, everyone needs a separate um, identifier, and then yeah, there isn't very much extra information here. Normally there are multiple lines with information in GEO for the more detailed studies. Below that, we have um, supplementary data for the samples. So in this case, you could have links to sample information. You may have links to the RNA sequence data. Uh, in this case, there are links to the data files that we need to get the RNA seq data, the supplementary files. And we'll take a look at one of those. At the bottom, if it's gene expression data, this is where you just find the expression values. So you have the samples across the top. You have the ID is the gene name or the probe identifier for the gene expression data all the way down. And at the top of this row that says sample data row count has nice numbers of 20,000 or so for each sample. So gene expression data is very easy to pass because this file has the values. You then just have to figure out whether you trust the values or whether you need to reanalyze. For RNA-seq data, we have a bit more curation to do. So the clinical data in this case, um, we've made up a, an ID, patient one, patient two, patient three here. We're assuming that these are three separate patients. We've uh, then got the same data for each one because that's all that GEO had. That's mapped with a clinical data file. So um, there are possibilities of having demographic data for age, gender, and ethnicity for any study involving humans. So that's three blank columns above because there's no information. And then we have report vital status. Column seven is the COVID-19 patient. And sample cell line is telling you uh, the average fluid. And that's the way those will appear in Transmart. If we want to make these appear differently, uh, the infection data sometimes appears as the patient has a diagnosis of COVID patient. And sometimes the same tags are used in GEO for cell lines that have been deliberately infected with virus. So we sometimes need to massage those values to make them appear uh, more obviously in the clinical data. The RNA-seq data, what we need to finish up with is a mapping file that has each, for each of the subjects with one or more samples. So each of the samples that we're, we're working with data for has to be mapped to a patient or a cell sample. Uh, there may be one or more samples for one individual, or there may just be one sample per individual. 
this one sample per individual, we can basically load this sample data up as clinical data. Where there are multiple ones, it's harder to do. And so that's mapped from the data in the, the geo series matrix file. And then we have to take the data for each of these three samples and find the gene expression data. So here we have a probe ID, and these are human gene names prefixed with HSA to make them unique. Uh, for three sample identifiers, and then these are the TPM values for each of these three samples for each of these genes. So we've taken reads per kilo base, um, normalized for one million reads in each case. So how do we do that? Well, we need to, oh, sorry, um, having got that data into Transart, there are a bunch of canned analyses uh, in the advanced workflows tab. And there were guides to the documentation in the Transmart talk in the previous video. So you can do a bunch of graphical analyses, a set of heat maps for comparison, and look for marker selection. Um, principal component analysis, and some others if they're relevant to the data that we have. So you can explore the capabilities there and see what you can get. There's also an interactive uh, version of some of those called Smart R. And so, for example, all the heat maps are combined into one workflow that does the heat maps, hierarchical and k means clustering, and marker selection in one uh, analysis. But not all the methods are there. Some methods are only in the uh, advanced workflow tab, and we're working on adding the rest of them to Transmart in the next release. You can export data. So for external analysis, you can uh, package your data up as separate files. Um, so you take a subset of data, the time point of interest or two time points of interest, export the data as tab separated files, and then analyze it further in whatever package you have. And we'll have some compute resources available for the data from to help you to do that. Uh, typically, the file is available in your browser, so you see it in the Transmart interface and you can download it as a client. The file does also exist on the server, so if you ask, we can go and find it for you and copy it by hand if that's a more efficient way of copying large files around. And this is the data export tab, so you just click on uh, data export here and you can. Uh, then export the clinical data or the RNA-seq data. And it will be for the, the subset of individual subjects, patients, cell, uh, cell samples, whatever it is that you've selected. And any data, uh, any data values that you've dropped in here, so we've added a few additional data values in this case to expand the clinical data. That will all be exported and you can use that for analysis. Okay, we've got some documentation available uh, from the utilities menu in Transmart. You can get the Transmart, complete Transmart menu by clicking the help option. It will bring documentation for you. There's also a, a copy on the Axiomedic support platform. So if you go to this URL, you can go to Axiomedics and send their support platform, and uh, you can find uh, more information there. And information on transport for developers is on the foundation wiki. And for support, we'll have a Slack channel that Rudy can give you more information on, and we'll put it into the emails that we send out. Uh, we also have the Zendesk support. You can look for articles of interest and contact either the Exomedic support address or contact me directly. I'd be very happy to help, and I'll be on hand on all the channels to help during the data prompt. So thanks very much. These are the people involved in the, the Dell COVID project to date. Um, Gentium is a, uh, a company that uh, is developing machine intelligence for biology. Uh, and we've been working uh, on a COVID uh, data set um, that we can uh, are, are making available here. Um, Gentium is a knowledge science company. 
uh, we have uh, tools that can actually extract uh, information from a whole lots of different data sources, both public sources out on the, the internet, uh, PubMed, um, uh, podcasts, and uh, all sorts of uh, data sources, and ingest that into our uh, AI machine uh, that builds out a knowledge base uh, of all this information uh, through semantic analysis, uh, natural language processing, from that derives knowledge graph of all the information that we uh, ingested. The products that we offer are knowledge bases that are focused on specific uh, areas. So we have a number that, uh, that I'll show you in a second. And then from these knowledge bases, we generate knowledge graphs. Uh, this is a, a, an automated system. It's a self-learning system that uh, ingests information and from it uh, starts to uh, modify and create its, its rule or own rules. Uh, in terms of uh, what types of information it is extracting and also what the relationships are uh, between them. Uh, this uh, operates, uh, as I said, automatically and uh, new data is brought into the system uh, a number of times a day um, <clears throat> and then made available. And then from this, we generate our knowledge graphs, uh, which are uh, re a graphical representation of all the information that uh, is in the knowledge base. We currently have a number of these uh, knowledge magazines uh, for particular disease areas, and these are all available from the Intentium uh, website. And uh, they're all freely available. You can look at them and uh, search and see what the types of information is out there. And I'm just gonna focus on obviously the coronavirus um, tool that we've built uh, and look at some of the data that's in there uh, that we have that will be available next week during the data thon. Um, the first piece that we, we have built is a, uh, a COVID uh, newscast, we call it. This is a, a magazine um, type of a format that uh, has taken all the information that our engine has uh, identified uh, over the last um, four or five months and uh, on, on COVID-19 uh, and uh, has broken it up into uh, a set of categories, uh, including uh, vaccine, epidemiology, uh, discovery uh, models, computational modeling, and also clinical information and clinical trials. And uh, you can come into our, this magazine and look at these individual sections. There are specific articles. Uh, there's links back to the, to the articles, and then also links to the knowledge graph uh, component of just that article. Um, Again, a knowledge graph takes uh, particular subjects like gene, disease, or anatomy uh, and connects it to another object uh, through a process of predication where uh, we know that these two objects maybe are linked. And then uh, through our natural language analysis, we uh, identify what, what is the, 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 uh, the nature of that linkage. And so we end up with a knowledge graph that has uh, a lot of information uh, across uh, the, the entire space um, that includes genes, uh, compounds, drugs, the actual articles themselves, uh, areas of anatomy. Uh, we also um, have uh, grants and uh, preprints now uh, in, the, uh, in the knowledge base and uh, all of these come, uh, you know, will we'll display showing the various connections uh, that, that we've identified uh, that are in the knowledge graph and I'll show you in a second. Uh, what these are. This is all layered on top of a scaffold uh, where we've gone and looked at uh, a wide number of uh, different uh, ontologies and data sources and brought this information again as kind of a background. This is kind of the, the known biological uh, information and um, this is all uh, it, it, uh, across these 35 data types. It's about 8.7 million of these nodes now on, in, in the background. And then also the edges, the connections between these, uh, we have about 43 million. And it shows things like uh, upregulates, downregulates, uh, causes, treats, um, uh, the various verbs that connect to these different uh, types of, uh, of components. You know, as an example, you can query this knowledge graph in a way that, for example, you could say, so if I'm interested in brain cancer, what are all the genes that have ever been implicated into uh, in brain cancer? Uh, so this uh, this gives you uh, just a, a quick idea of um, you know what might be out there, and uh, what I'd like to do now is jump into and show you 
of these different um, these different tools. The first one I'll look at um, briefly is our uh, newscast. Uh, this is uh, again it's a magazine type format. Um, when you open it up, these are just all the latest articles that have been identified and brought into the system, uh, no matter what the, the different uh, subject areas are. And it tells you that this first one's about a clinical trial, then about a discovery, uh, R and D paper, uh, the paper on antibodies, et cetera. We also uh, keep track of what are the most popular articles during the past week. Uh, and you know, any one of these, if one is in particular interest, you can uh, you click on it and uh, you actually go to um, a, uh, a generated summary of what the article or the item is about. Um, and um, you know, you have the option to, to tweet it out if you want to you know, share it with your friends uh, or whatever. Uh, there's always a link back to the original reference. In this case, it's a PubMed article um, and uh, you know, all the links that, that come with that. You can actually get back at the original article potentially, obviously depending on if uh, you have access to it. Um, but um, also the, the other exciting thing is that uh, right from here, you can actually pop over to the knowledge graph of that article. Uh, and so uh, this is actually what uh, our system, uh, the articles here in the center, and these are all of the, the different uh, uh, items that have been picked out uh, for this article. And uh, they're all color coded. So for example, these, these green items are from drug bank and these are compounds. Um, there are, uh, you know, this is a taxonomy um, of, uh, of viruses. Um, we've got the uh, genes, I believe. Um, and uh, all of these are, you know, as you uh, on the left here, uh, they, uh, they will show themselves, right, uh, where it's from. And then also always give you a link back to the actual uh, original piece of evidence or um, where it's, it's been identified from. Uh, the other thing you can do is for any one of these, um, these nodes, uh, you can right click on them and expand them and then find out, for example, so for this compound, uh, you can find out, you know, what other genes are implicated with that, with that compound. It's 25, so it's going to be kind of that large, but this has now picked out a whole set of genes that are connected to that compound. Uh, and um, the other cool thing is that if something else on the graph that you've already had in place is related to that, is it has a connection to that uh, gene, it will also show on here. So you can start to see linkages where maybe you didn't realize uh, you have linkages between, um, you know, with, with kind of our, uh, this gene and then this other compound, like chloroquinum. So, you know, this gives you a chance to start to explore you know, the different pieces that are out here. Um, and um, I look at the, um, you know, the, the, the connectivity between uh, all these different pieces. Uh, just a couple more things on the, um, the, uh, the, the newscast. Um, these are by, by topic. So you can just look at the latest epidemiology articles, for example, articles on the epi epidemic, you know, and the pandemic and, and how, you know, what's been published lately. You can look at computational models. You know who's been doing modeling. What what types of uh, uh, computations and models have they presented? Um, and uh, similarly for uh, clinical trials, for example. So you know it's it's possible to do um, you know all these these things. And you know we also have also have search tools. So if you're really just interested in, for example, the Pfizer vaccine. You can put that in as a query term here, uh, do a search, and then get back uh, the articles uh, related to the Pfizer vaccine. And um, these are all sorted by uh, by date. Uh, and if and if one of them, you know, happens to interest you, uh, again, you can you know drill down and um, get a summary of that that article. Uh, go back to the original source or pop into the knowledge graph for that particular uh, article. Okay. Um, I think that's, uh, you know, this is available. Uh, you can query and go through all the different pieces if there are particular areas, you know, that you, you discover you want to drill down more deeper in. 
this can not only give you kind of latest references and information, but also start to give you information in terms of, um, you know, what some relationships are that, that you, you might not know about or, you know, would be interested in learning more about uh, as you go through. <clears throat> And if I could just quickly go back to um, to the um, to the knowledge graph itself, um, we have uh, it, it is a Neo4j knowledge graph, uh, and so you can search it directly with Neo4j. Uh, although to do that, you you need to learn Cipher, the query language. I think Curious uh, is uh, also operates on the exact same knowledge graph, but gives you um, a little easier. Um, User interface. And so if I go to the, I'm curious, um, you can, um, you know, put things in like uh, this is what I searched before, but you can do Pfizer vaccine. And uh, this now has, has brought, uh, you know, a number of, of different types of references. Uh, so for example, uh, maybe we're interested in, a, you know, the particular clinical trial. We can bring that that clinical trial up, and then start to explore um, what are the the different parts of pieces of information that we know uh, about that clinical trial you know, that the system has discovered. Um, as I said, we've got you know we cover a lot of different um, um, resources. One of the things that uh, is is good to to realize is that when you expand um, these, you you have you know edges. Um, that, that come up first, and then uh, as you go down, you get to the, um, the different node types. You do more, you get a, a little easier um, way to, to query. But um, one of the things that I wanted to point out is that when uh, it's, it's prefaced by an NLP uh, or an IKG, uh, these are you know either edges or nodes that the, the system, that the COVID, um, uh, a knowledge base has um, and knowledge graph have uh, for the that particular piece. So you know, on the one hand, you might be getting uh, all the pathways that have been associated with it, no matter what the disease. The one specific for this knowledge base uh, it preferences with the uh, IKG. And, um, let's see what we get. So there's um, brought a couple of processes up here, I believe. <clears throat> The um, Neo4j, as I said, is a little more complex to, to query, but um, you know will be will be available to, to help out during the data uh, and can try to help um, um, with that information. So uh, the other thing um, that I wanted to say uh, again, these are there. You can start playing with these today if if you want um, and uh, take a look at these. Uh, the other part is that uh, we will be collecting. A resource summary, and so that all the different um, uh, uh, references that uh, Peter or I've talked about in the last uh, two uh, webinars uh, and, and some other things will be available uh, in this resource summary. We will get that out to you later today by email. Uh, there will also be a link to that uh, on the website uh, later today. Um, uh, the other part is that we have set up a Slack channel. Uh, and we've uh, had a number of other uh, things that um, will be available for you to use uh, during the day -thon. So uh, hopefully this gives you a, a, a quick overview of the, all the, the resources and the, the data sets that, that uh, we have. Uh, there, there may be a few more things added when we get to the data -thon itself. And uh, we hope that you'll join us uh, on the, in the morning of um, uh, November 18th, uh, where we'll, we will be starting at the, I think it's um, maybe 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, again, it's uh, it's listed out there. And the other thing that I will get out today is uh, an invite, specific invite for all of you to put it on your calendars uh, so that you remember. Um, the first thing that we'll do uh, on Wednesday is a break into teams, uh, depending on how many. We've got about 30 people registered today, uh, more registering uh, teams. So. We'll break into teams, and then the teams will start to to meet together. And uh, hopefully, you'll be able to spend uh, some some significant time during those three days. And then uh, we'll end up on Friday afternoon uh, with a summary from each team presented, um, so that we all can see uh, what what type of uh, work was done and uh, what uh, what sort of results that you're able to get. 
So good luck to everyone. And uh, we will see you um, on uh, Wednesday, November 18th. Thank you.